step up here, gentlemen, as you step up on the platform. You might find it easier to hold with two hands and sidestep. We'll carry all the way to the very end. Yeah.
On behalf of the United States of America, the United States Marine Corps, it is my privilege to present you this flag in memory and honor of your husband, Thoreau Thurman Kenneth Woods, for his service to our country. When called to serve, he served without hesitation. It is our request that on holidays and special days that you display this flag in his honor and memory. We ask God to bless and keep him and we ask that the dear Lord comfort you and your lovely friends. <laughs> you get when you get old old veterans like this. <laughs> kind of hard to get up and down. <laughs> Thank you. It's our privilege to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this great honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What a great honor that is. We'll now have a eulogy by Roger Wood, Darren Vicky's first son. On behalf of um, my mom and our family. Oh, and I just have one more thing. I apologize. <laughs> In my deep pocket. This is just a little token from our honor guard. Thank you. Again, on behalf of my mom and our family. We want to thank all those who have helped with today in many, in many ways. We thank the VFW for their tribute and those who have helped prepare. Thank Anderson for their help and different family members for what they've done over the last couple of days. Saying goodbye to my dad is one of the hardest things I've had to do. I am Roger, his oldest son, and on behalf of my mom and the rest of our family, 
again, we thank you for being here to help support. I can't think of a greater honor than to stand and tell you a little bit about Theron. Other names he was often called, some intentional, and others by mistake, and just kind of stuck with us, are the Ron, Therm, Thirst, we got a new one today, the Row. <laughs> His closest friends called him TK. He was called Grandpa, Dad, and sometimes more affectionately, Pa. Reserved only from my mom was simply Hun. His obituary reads, Theron Kenneth Wood passed away on April 2nd, 2022, surrounded by his family. He was born on August 28, 1942 in Salt Lake City, Utah, to Willis and Cordelia Wood, and raised by his mother and stepfather, William Bohm. After graduating from Granite High in 1960, he served a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Toronto, Canada. He then served his country with the Marine Reserves. On January 2nd, 1966, he married his sweetheart. Vicki Mayhew in the Salt Lake City Temple. Theron loved to spend time in the outdoors, fishing, <laughs> hunting, and camping. But was it at his happiest when he was with his wife, kids, and grandkids, unless fishing was really good. <laughs> he was a great mentor to many youth and church leaders, coach, and friend. His hands were comparable to sandpaper. This came from long days working as a carpenter and a home builder. Even though he had strong, tough hands, he never lost the soft touch of a father. He taught us to work very hard, never complain, and never lose sight of the important things in life. Vicky and Theron served 12 years as missionaries in Salt Lake City at the Conference Center and Tabernacle, where they ministered to thousands of people. He was kind and compassionate to everyone he met and knew how to make everyone feel special and loved. He is survived by his sweetheart, Vicki, seven children, 33 grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. He is preceded in death by his parents and first daughter, Wendy. Dad grew up in the Sugar House area of Salt Lake City. It was him, his sisters, Gloria and Charlene, his mom, Cordy, Grandma Bone, and his stepdad, Bill. He was fortunate to have many friends during those years, but none <coughs> as close as John and Tom. These are the people that were closest to dad and their influences are part of who dad is and was growing up and who he became. He often talked fondly at that time growing up there were many other friends over the years that were part of his life. And in one way or the other, he was grateful for all of them. He learned and loved to play sports and excelled in basketball and baseball. But his uncle's farm in Bluffdale is where he learned how to hunt and fish. Up to the day of his passing, those were his two favorite activities. The proof is in the hundreds of picks in the mountains, on the lakes, and streams. Countless memories are etched in the minds and hearts of those that spent time with him in the outdoors. In spending time over the last few days thinking about how best to eulogize Dad, a chronological listing of activities, dates, achievements, likes, dislikes, didn't seem to fit. I wanted to share who he is as a person and the patriarch of our family. While watching, listening, and telling stories and talking about dad this week, a common theme began to emerge in my eye. Hands. His hands. I believe it began on January 2nd, 1966. 
this is where he took the hand of my mom over the altar in the Salt Lake Temple and was married for eternity. This was the beginning of their life together and the start of their family. Soon children started to come and come and come <laughs> and kept coming. Eight children in 14 years. Dad always said he wanted more, but Mom said she would leave him if they did. <laughs> During the years of raising a family, Dad worked hard to support the family. We seemed to move often. Being a carpenter, he built with his hands our first home in Taylorsville, then Riverton, and then a couple of homes in Alpine before they left to Boulder City, Nevada. After a, after a couple of years there, they came back to the same neighborhood in Alpine where we all call home. Dad worked long hours in the heat of the summer sun and the cold in wintry days. His hands grew tough, rough, and calloused. Some may think that rough, calloused hands were bad. Mom would say the opposite. She loved his hands. The more weathered and rougher, the better the, mess, the, the, better the massages were. She was the recipient of those massages almost daily for 56 years and talks about them often. She needed to deserve them after long days of controlling my brothers. <laughs> Thank goodness for two delightful daughters and the oldest son who kept the family grounded in the peace and <laughs> Dad's hands were finely tuned tools and could build just about anything. He taught us all about life by doing and showing, building and shaping, molding his family the best he knew how. Each child of his came into this life with his hands fully emerged. He held us in his hands when he gave us each a name and a blessing as an infant, baptized us, conferred the priesthood on the boys, as well as countless anointings when anyone was ill. Those hands were also quick to close and lock the bedroom door when mom and dad needed to talk. <laughs> and they seemed to talk a lot. <laughs> he loved mom more than anything. And that showed through the gentle way that he would rub her feet and neck with those leather, dry hands. Dad had a way of giving her family everything we needed, even if it meant that he and mom went without. He wore a rust-colored corduroy suit far past the fashion expiration date. <laughs> Even times of a little extra money, we joke about him taking his wallet from his pocket, opening it up, blowing out the dust, putting his eye up as if searching for a lost buck, then slowly pulling out what we needed. He would then give it a little kiss goodbye as he handed it over. <laughs> Dad had many positive attributes and skills that set him apart from many. One great example is something we just learned about this week. We found a letter that was written to his mother while he was a Marine in boot camp. The letter from Lieutenant Colonel Crooks dated April 9, 1964. It reads in part, In order that you may have a complete understanding of Private First Class Wood's accomplishment, it should be noted that he entered in the Marine Corps and progressed through training with him. From that, excuse me, um, it should be noted that all, let me start that over again so it makes sense. <laughs> My apologies. In order for you that you may have a complete understanding of Private First Class Wood's accomplishment, it should be noted that he won this coveted award in competition with 52 men, all of whom entered the Marine Corps and progressed through training with him. From that number and on the recommendations of his drill instructors, the Marine in the platoon who displayed the highest order of skill and professional knowledge 
in a wide range of basic military subjects was closely examined. <laughs> From that number, and on the recommendations of the drill instructor, who displayed the highest order of skill and professional knowledge in a wide range of basic military subjects was closely examined. After considering the knowledge, conduct, attitude, military bearing, and leadership potential of all the candidates, your son was judged the most worthy to receive the Marine Corps dress blues uniform. <laughs> This was an honor to be the one person in the platoon to carry the flag on graduation day as the only recruit in the Marine dress blues. Attributes listed in that letter, skill, knowledge, conduct, attitude, and leadership is who dad is. Those attributes and traits were seen in all aspects of his life. Family, church, work, neighbor, and friend. In honor of those attributes in his service, I wore blue and white to honor and represent the Marine dress blues and dad's enduring qualities and traits. Dad was not flashy. He didn't care much about driving nice cars, wearing fancy clothes, or keeping up with others. My parents created together a general feeling of content and happiness for the family. Everyone included friends and neighbors were always welcome at the home and still are. Church service was also important to dad and he spent many years in various callings but loved the youth best. I know it's because of his ability to help teach and mold young people just like he did at home. Family was most important and the family him and mom built together. I'm a little ashamed to say that the first time I remember recognizing his commitment to family was when I was in high school. He didn't say anything. It was only action-based. I was on the golf team, and parents and spectators were not allowed to follow or be on the course to watch the students. It wasn't like other high school sports where they could see what their children were doing. That didn't stop my dad. I remember seeing him walking the perimeter of the course with his dried, cracked hands clenched to the chain link fence, just watching and observing. I never once remember seeing anyone else's parent doing the same thing. I knew he loved me. It showed me by deed. I have no doubt that all my siblings could tell a similar story. I don't remember dad ever raising a hand in anger. They weren't used for that. If he was ever happy challenged, he would channel that downward. He used his foot and a good pair of boots <laughs> to do all the dirty work. Again, my brothers. As dad aged, the family grew in numbers. Grandkids were now having similar experiences in watching grandpa's hands. A bit slower than before, but still a carpenter and a teacher, much like the savior. He loved mom more than everyone even knew. In recent years, his memory and ability to do many of the things that came naturally became increasingly difficult. The one thing that never changed was him reaching out his hand to offer assistance to pull you close for a hug. The last two sentences of a poem I read kind of characterized dad, and it simply said, Father's hand, a guiding hand, teaching me so much. God created all these hands, a manifestation of his love. Dad showed love through his actions. His hands softened over the last couple of years and he slowed a bit more but his hands remained the same 
your warm hands, grasping hands, firm handshake, clapping hands, hands that tickle, sharing hands, working hands, healing hands, giving hands, helping hands, skilled hands, grandpa hands, and loving hands. We all have different stories about Theron, the Ron, Therm, Thirst, TK, Dad, or Grandpa. Some funny, some happy, sad, rare occasions, happy challenged, spiritual, and many deep personal feelings and stories. The one thing we all have in common is the touch of his hands and how he reached out to all as an individual and had a lasting impact on many. His last gift in the closing moments of his mortal life were right where I like to think it began on June 2nd, 1966. He and mom were hand in hand as he peacefully slipped from this life into the waiting arms of his family who passed before. I hope that helps who my dad was. I feel a little impressed to share a basic testimony, especially as we near Easter. <laughs> I know that our Heavenly Father has a plan. And as we think about Easter this year, it's important to know that Jesus is the Christ. And through him, in his life, he lives. And we too can live. And we will all be able to join again someday soon. I just wanted to leave you that testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Thank you, Roger. I think he asked that we now let anybody who would like to come up and share um, a few thoughts or stories you have about Theron. We would uh, ask that the family go first, and then um, we'll go from there. I, I wish, uh, I want you all to know, too, that the family's invited back to our church for a beautiful lunch that the Alpine Fourth Ward Relief Society has prepared, and there will be a mic there also. So if you feel like you want, would rather share something at that point, you can do so. Part of the family. My name is John Kennedy. And I've been friends with Theron for 74 years. I have lots of memories of Theron and mostly hunting and fishing. And having good times together. Theron learned to fish at a young age. He had a neighbor named Oliver Graff who took him fishing and he fell in love with him. When we got to be about 12 or 13, there was a fish hatchery in our neighborhood. Every day we'd go down and watch the fish. One day, they loaded the trucks to take them out and plant the fish. And the guys there said, hey, would you guys like to go with us? 
Sure. So we went we went with them. They showed us how to get the net and get the fish out and take it over and lay it gently in the spring river or stream or lake and let the fish go. So we did that several times and then we'd go home <coughs> and when our fathers came home from work we'd ask them to take us fishing. <laughs> we knew where all the holes were. <laughs> so we'd go out and we'd limit in no time at all. <laughs> Darren went his fishing. He'd always let out a little go. <laughs> so when I'd go fishing with him, he'd do that about 20 times before I'd even get a nibble. He knew how to fish. He was an expert. It's hard for me. I love you, Tinner. Thanks for all the memories. My name is Bob Pace, and he is my brother, so that qualifies as a family, I hope. Anyway, there's a monument in Alpine to him, and it was my house. It's on the corner of uh, Watkins Drive, I think, in uh, High Bench. Aunt Theron came over, and I had a my Native American boys and my boys there were building our house. But we didn't know anything about putting rafters on it. We had the walls up and everything. But Theron showed up. And he showed us how to put all the trusses up there so that we could put the plywood on and the shingles and all that kind of stuff. I was talking to Brian today and he said that they still call that the Pace House. We haven't lived there for 40 years, <laughs> but it, to me, it's a it's a monument to Theron and his goodness. He helped the old guy with nine kids struggling to build a house in trouble financially, and he, uh, besides the fact that we did a lot of scouting together, uh, he was just a sweet man, very sweet man. He's still sweet. And I hope to see him. I'll probably see him before you all do. Because <laughs> I'm about 10 years older than him. But anyway, uh, we're just lucky if we had a chance. If you had a chance to know Theron at all, your life was blessed. And I got a testimony too. And I know I'll skip to see him. And I can't wait to see him and, and when Vicky gets up there and they can have a big hug and, and we can all hug together, that's going to be sweet. And that's the sweetest thing I can think of for such a sweet man. And I say it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm still walking. <laughs> Barely. Kind of wobbly. <laughs> You're doing good. It's like fast and testimony meeting when you're trying to decide if you're going to get up or not. <laughs> um, I just, I don't even know what I want to say is that I'm grateful for everybody that's come out to celebrate my dad today. And, uh, I just want him to know, my mom, that they've been amazing parents. And uh, um, I feel like his favorite son, but I think we all did. And, uh, 
he made each one of us feel special and took the time, as Roger said, to be interested in the things that we were doing and, and never felt like I was a burden to my dad. And uh, I have a lot of memories of my dad too, like Roger said, with him standing on the side of the uh, fence. I remember my dad standing behind the backstop when I was trying to bat and telling me, coaching me, and I was like, oh my gosh. Keep your arm up. Step, you're stepping out. You're stepping in the bucket. And I was just like, but, you know, he was there to coach me, and I, I appreciate the things that he taught me. And um, I hope I can be the half the man that my dad has been in his life. And, uh, again, I'm, I'm thankful for his life. And I'm so truly grateful for the gospel and the peace that it brings to know that, uh, someday that will be reunited again and I look forward to that and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, kind of similar stories I guess. Like When I was playing baseball I remember my dad behind the backstop as well and um, on this occasional at bat, I had just struck out, and I chose to say a few choice words, and my dad looked at me and said, I can read your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but he was always just happy and, and just great to be there and happy to support you in whatever you did. And as the youngest, I do get teased in the family as having much more than my older siblings did. And I know that that was true. It's hard for me to admit sometimes because I get teased so hard about it, but my dad always supported us and always gave us everything that we needed. And we were always first on his list. He always came after we did. And I'm very grateful for that. And I love him so much. Um, but I say that in English Christ. Amen. Love you, Pop. There's one name that Roger forgot to mention, and that's Daddy. Because he's my daddy. And I'm a daddy's girl. I will always be grateful for him and the unconditional love that he showed each one of us. As much as we like to think we're perfect, we weren't. And we're not. But he didn't care and he loved all of us. But I'm gonna miss him and his hugs and him coming to tell me, don't you want to put something on your lips? He always wanted me to wear lipstick. <laughs> and I don't like lipstick and neither does Tyler. <laughs> first met Theron, I didn't want anything to do with him. <laughs> he kept calling me and calling me and calling me and I finally told him, I said, I don't want to date you. He said, okay. So he quit calling. Then I missed him. <laughs> I wasn't calling. Anyway, I don't know if John remembers, but we were up, do you remember? We were up at the U, at the 
basketball game and I saw John and we needed a ride home because our car was broken down. <clears throat> I remember Theron came over when he came walking out of the bathroom I fell in love as soon as I saw him I knew that was it. The next day was Valentine's Day and we started dating. We got we dated, let's see, February, engaged in March, and married in June. So it went really fast. But the thing that was funny is we were sitting in the car and I thought it was going to take me out to dinner, you know, and we were going to get engaged and we're sitting in the car and all singles. Here, do you want this? <laughs> that was my ring. My engagement ring. <laughs> I didn't get anything fancy. I just got the hair. <laughs> but I loved him so much. He's... <laughs> I can't even tell you how much I'm going to miss him. <laughs> he is the love of my life. And we just did everything together. I mean, he just, come and sit by me, come and sit by me, is what he was always saying. I said, I, Darren, I need to get the dishes done, or no, I need to do this. Now I wish I had spent more time sitting by him. So I guess you always have regrets, but I do love him more than anything in the world, and I know he loved me. We just had the best marriage ever, and I, I know the kids watched watched us and they know how much we did have a great love for each other and I love my family I love my kids they have done so much all this preparation and has been done by the kids I did absolutely nothing I don't know what I'd do without my family they've been awesome and I appreciate all of you being here too to support our family we love all of you and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ Amen, Amen. It's probably a great place to have a break. And then, again, please, if any of you would like to say something, there will be a mic at the um, luncheon served after. Vicki, I do have a confession to make. I think there were a lot of days you thought Darren was at work and he was at Lone Peak Baseball Field watching my boys play. <laughs> he loved that field. He, he loved baseball. I, uh, I got to say, I, I agree with Roger. I feel impressed that if Darren were here, he would want his grandchildren to know that he had a testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is not just comforting words. Because of Easter coming up and because of our Savior Jesus Christ, we will see Theron again. And this is just his shell. Theron's not there. Theron's going to be with Vicki. He's going to be with you guys. You'll feel him. If you want to feel him, he'll be there. He'll be helping you. He'll be around. I told some of the family members yesterday in my office, I spent 45 minutes talking to a lady who was in tears at having to watch what her mom was going through in a care center. Can you imagine Theron in a care center? What a beautiful catastrophe this is. <laughs> Theron was probably hooping and hollering the minute he got out of his body. I know he'll miss Vicky terribly and the kids, but can you imagine that reunion with Wendy and Jesus Christ and his Heavenly Father? I testify that this is true, that there is more to this earth, that these feelings that we have and this heartache that we have for Theron, it's there for a reason. And there's a purpose to that. And it extends far beyond this earth. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I got a call from your bishop this morning. He wished to tell you how much he loved you. He does not love you as much as the Alpine Fourth Ward. <laughs> so you are always welcome. And we will always love you and we will always appreciate the example of your incredible children. We'll now have a closing song in this very room by the grandchildren, following which the dedication of the grave will be by Jason Wood.
I did pretty good, huh? <laughs> Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the authority of the Melchizedek Priesthood, I dedicate and consecrate this burial plot for the body of Theron Wood, and ask thee to hallow this ground and protect it 
until the resurrection. And ask at this time, Father, to bless our mom, Vicki Wood, and comfort her and our family. And help us to have faith in the plan of salvation and know that the time will come that we will be reunited as a family once again. We're grateful for amazing man, Darren Wood, and his life that he shared with each one of us. Father, thank you for allowing us to be a part of his life. We ask for these favors and blessings at this time, Father. Do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All bearers would now like to put their corsages on the casket, and that concludes our service. Thank you.